Attendees are coming on. Remember to mute. I better not. All set. Good evening and welcome. I'm Mo Handel, Select Board Chair. First, we'll confirm that all members and others anticipated to be on the agenda are present and able to hear me. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. First, among our members, Matt Borelli. Yes. Marianne Cooley. Yes. Dan Matthews. Yes. And John Bullion. Yes. Thank you. Um, town staff here are Kate Fitzpatrick, town manager. Yes. Dave Davidson, assistant town manager. Yes. Thank you. Uh, anticipated speakers on our agenda are George Junta Jr. Yes. And Tal Achatuv. Are you, you're on mute. Hi. Uh, you, yes, okay. Mr. Chair, uh, Tal wasn't there when you just announced you were just letting people know who was at the meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, this open meeting of the Needham Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with current state regulations and is being recorded. It is being convened through zoom.us as posted on the town's website, which spells out how the public may gain access. Some attendees are here via that video conference. Public access does not ensure that there will be public participation unless required by the law. None of the items on our agenda will include pub public comment. Please also be aware that others may be able to see you. Anything that you share or state may be captured by the recording and become a matter of public record. All supporting materials for this meeting, including the agenda, are available on the town's website, www.needham.gov, unless otherwise noted. The ground rules for this meeting are designed to allow for an accurate public record. I will introduce each of the speakers on our agenda. After they conclude their remarks, each board member will be asked by name for any comment, questions, or motions. For all of us, please mute your phone or device when you are not speaking. Please speak clearly and in a way that helps assure accurate minutes. Please wait until recognized by name and please also state your name again before speaking. And finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be by a roll call vote. Thank you very much. Um, the first item on our agenda is a certificate of appreciation for Greg Shesko, uh, recently retired member of the Needham Planning Board, uh, a library board. And I would like to uh, invite Dan Matthews to read the appreciation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And on a personal note, if I may say, reflecting on this day, I first met Greg Shesko more than 30 years ago as a library when he was had just getting started and in, involved with town government as a library volunteer and as a candidate for town meeting. Um, since that time, he's been a great friend and an asset to the library, a friend to many of the people participating in this meeting and others in town that are not and a, and, a, and a true friend to the town and its people. And so if I could, I'd like to read the, the certificate and offer it as a motion. From the town of Needham, Massachusetts Select Board, awarded to Greg Shesko, in recognition of over a quarter century of service as a Needham Library Board trustee, and for serving two terms on the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. The town thanks you for being instrumental in the creation of the present library and, and in helping to gain state funding of millions of dollars towards the major renovation of the library. Congratulations, this 28th day of April, 2020. So moved. Is there a second? Mr. Borelli seconds. Are there any other comments on the motion? Any discussion? Then we'll have a vote. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Aye. Mr. Bullion. Yes. Mr. Borelli. Yes. Ms. Cooley. Yes. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Please, Mr. Bullion. I'd like to move the consent agenda. Is there a second? 
Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Nope. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Mr. Bullion? Yes. Mr. Borelli? Yes. Ms. Cooley? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. The chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair votes. Oh, and the chair votes aye. Yes, thank you. Uh, likewise on the previous motion. Uh, the Zoom is very interesting. <laughs> it is. Um, the first item on our agenda is the annual town meeting citizens petition to the zoning bylaw amendment and present here to discuss that is George Junta Jr. and the chair recognizes Mr. Junta. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as indicated, I am George Junta Jr. I'm an attorney and I uh, actually represent uh, Bruno and Linda DeFazio who own and live uh, in a house <clears throat> on Hunting Road, uh, basically not too far from where the Muzzy site is. And the DeFazios, along with uh, many of their neighbors who live over in that, uh, that area, are petitioning that the town do a map change to change a bunch of lots, 23 lots in particular, from the SRA zoning district to the SRB zoning districts. Uh, the lots that we are talking about are located between, generally between Hunting Road and Route 128. And then again, uh, and basically from Kendrick Street going all the way up to where Hunting Road almost touches 128. And then also going in the opposite direction from Kendrick to Cheney, which is just a short distance away from Kendrick. Um, as indicated, there's 23 total lots. Uh, all the lots are in the fully in the SRA zone, but none of the lots fully meet requirements in the SRA zone. SRA zone currently requires one acre of land area and at least 150 feet of frontage. Of the 23 lots, only four of them have adequate frontage and none have adequate area. Now we're not sure um, exactly when or why these lots were put into the SRA district, but, but where none of them comply, they all must have been created prior to that. So we also don't know what the original planning objective was, but there doesn't appear to be any current planning objective. Uh, unlike, for example, the Clark Road area, where there's an issue of protecting uh, the Wellesley Waterlands and, and aquifer protection, this area sandwiched between Hunting Road and 128 doesn't appear to have any real reason to keep it as acre zone. Um, as indicated, all 23 parcels are currently non-conforming with respect to applicable zoning requirements. All 23 parcels are fully developed. Uh, and then just across the street, on the other side of Hunting Road, the, the area is fully developed as single residence B. So on one side, you have 10,000 square foot lots. And on the other side, you have what's supposed to be acre lots, although they range anywhere from 5,000 square feet um, to generally the highest one, I think, is a little over 20,000 square feet. Of the 23 affected parcels, 20 of them have signed in support uh, or have requested that the zoning change be adopted. Of the three that have not signed on, uh, one could not be contacted, one declined to get involved one way or the other, and then the last parcel is actually owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, so basically, there is there is no apparent or stated opposition to the request. In addition, Several other properties in the area also have signed on in support, uh, and those those signatures and letters are uh, have been submitted to the town. So um, basically, we're we're trying to take this area that probably never should have been put in the acre zone and change it from acre to ten thousand square feet, and make these lots. Uh, most of them will become conforming. I think two of them will still be non-conforming, but of the twenty-three, like twenty-one, will now be conforming. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Junta. Are there any questions? This is a discussion item. We are not voting this uh, this evening. Mr. Bullion. Thank you. Um, George, what, what, so the effect is simply to change the zoning. What does this do to the properties, to all 23 properties? Um, are, are some, I've noticed in, in reviewing the documents that some exceed 20,000 square feet, are they subdividable? Um, what is the, ram the future ramification 
on that stretch of, pro of land on Hunting Road, and there are currently, you indicated 23 properties, what can that be rebuilt into from a number of residential housing standpoint? Okay, it, it's, it's it, you know, there, it's tough to give you a complete answer because in theory, if somebody were to acqui acquire all of the lots and knock down all of the houses, they could do one thing, uh, which is highly unlikely. Uh, much more likely would be sort of the infill development that is generally an area of concern, you know, where, where somebody takes an existing lot and divides it into two lots. Mm -hmm. This, this, these 23 lots, because of the fact that, that they don't only, um, I think there's only four of them have the frontage, it, you can't do that. You don't have enough frontage as it is, um, it, the, the lots as configured don't have enough frontage to just divide into two. So what would happen is people would have to combine lots and in combining lots, people would have to knock down houses. So uh, while it's not impossible that there might not be a lot or two or three created, uh, I don't think you're gonna, you would see a lot because of the fact that all 23 of these lots currently have houses on them. They're currently fully developed. From a, from a further development perspective, you're not likely to see uh, really much, if any significant redevelopment. What is, what would happen though, is right now in the SRA zone, uh, I didn't mention this, but there's a 30 foot front yard setback and a number of these houses currently do not comply. So as a result, if they wanna put an addition on, they either are prohibited from doing it under the Needham zoning bylaw, or to the extent they can do it, they have to go through the process with the zoning board of appeals and be subject to a public hearing and possible uh, neighborhood opposition. If for example, they've, they've um, angered a neighbor for whatever reason. Uh, and in fact, at least uh, one or two of the lots in the neighborhood have gone through the process, had to go to the board of appeals, you know, with additional costs, additional time and uncertainty to put an addition on their house. So while I can't tell you 100% for sure what would happen sort of redevelopment wise, I can tell you for certain, a lot of those houses now would be able to renovate and um, put additions on and work with their existing houses that can't currently. Does that answer your question, John? Yes, thank you. Are there any further questions? Yes. Dan? Um, the, I would understand that it is unlikely that all 23 lots would come under a single ownership in the near term. But I also, am I correct in conjecturing that you could ballpark how many units would fit in there under the, the revised zoning if it was under a single own ownership? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't looked at that, but I could certainly you know, run, run through it. Again, one of the biggest things that limits it, uh, well, there's a couple of things that limit it. One of the biggest ones is frontage in trying to get the frontage for the lots. And then the other one is because of the configuration, sort of the depth from Hunting Road to uh, Route 128 and fitting, fitting lots in that would have the frontage and have the area and meet the build factor and all that. Um, uh, it, would be, it would be tricky, but it would probably involve all sorts of twists and turns. So for example, down by Kendrick where it's deeper you know, somebody might look at putting in a road and actually doing a small subdivision, which would maybe maybe net, you know, an, a, one or two additional lots by putting them essentially in the back, but they'd have to go through the subdivision process. Further up hunting, as you're heading sort of towards Muzzy, you wouldn't be able to do that because you don't have enough depth to be able to fit something like that in. Um, but so I've not fully looked at it, but, you know, just sort of with an eye of where are the spots where if you had somebody get enough of them or all of them together, you know, even at that, I don't think you're talking about a lot of extra lots because of the, the restrictions with respect to the, the way these lots are laid out. Okay. Yeah, I, the town meeting members, they will de they'll decide what to do with this, with the petition. Um, I did want to just to be clear and also to give you opportunity to say if anything more about it, if you want to clarify, if you wanted. My own understanding of the history of this is a little, is a little in the background, it's a little different than some of what's been described. Um, my understanding is that this zoning, the uh, SRA zoning, which prevails from there all the way down to the railroad tracks um, on the, on, along Greendale Avenue, was put into place by our, our 
forefathers at the time that the super circumferential highway was put in to try to minimize development, which is by be between the highway and the two um, main secondary roads, namely Highland, rather uh, Greendale and, and Hunting in that area to um, minimize development in there. And in fact, a lot of that area was now at Woodlands. Now, our, uh, our forebears did not think of a number of the developments that have happened in land planning law uh, since that time, or even things that happened during that time, plus the advent of Chapter 40B and its role in the community. So that it, that's, a, that's a, a goal that has been more honored in the, in the breach, perhaps, than, than in practice. But I guess, for me, everyone acquired their lots having full knowledge of what those, the, the history of this and the rules were. Um, this board, in more recent memory, actually voted to endorse continuation of that pro policy, as I understand it. Um, during one of the litigations that arose in that area over the years, the town, uh, my understanding of the town's position in the litigation was that it was important to discourage the construction of additional residential housing so close to the highway, which has now been expanded right up to the edge of the, of the state's property line with the, that neighborhood. Um, and when we are, um, told of, you know, when the state is advocating, well, towns should be looking at um, different kinds of changes to zoning to try to improve regional conditions generally. Adding additional sing large single family housing stock is not on the list. So it doesn't, I'm always saying this does not seem to fit with um, the policy to date as I understand it. Um, my own view would be if the only issue is that people would like to get a little closer to, to um, than the 30 foot setback in that, in, in that neighborhood without having to go to the Board of Appeals, a much more narrowly crafted um, relief could be drafted that I would be very interested in seeing and, and supportive. Um, and that, um, as I said, town meeting will decide this, but I wanted to mention that I have reservations about it. And if you had other things you wanted to say about that, George, I'm interested. Sure, sure. And, and I, you know, my, that was part of my understanding for the section of SRA that's essentially south of Cheney Street. And, and both in terms of the, just the amount of land that is available there, the depth between hunting and then turning into Greendale and the highway is much deeper. There's much more raw land in terms of space. And then add to that the fact that South of Cheney Street, you, want, you know, that area is up until uh, recent times, you know, uh, in certain pockets that have appeared, was all mostly or largely wooded and forested. So it was essentially a buffer area. Uh, and that's actually one of the reasons why we specifically limited this proposal or this request to, to end at Cheney Street because from Cheney Street North, these 23 lots is an area that was developed at a time when, you know, like I said, one of the lots is just over 5,000 square feet. So it's an area that has, that has really been largely, has been developed maybe not quite to the maximum density it could be, but it's been developed close enough to it uh, that it's distinguishable from the raw land and the forested wooded land south of Cheney Street. Um, in particular, especially the, the clump between Kendrick and Cheney. I mean, that, that block in and of itself probably can't be touched at all. So in terms of, you know, future, in terms of trying to keep an eye to limiting additional homes, it's only the strip between Kendrick and sort of the tail end of hunting uh, where actually it dovetails into what is an SRB district. So, cause then you do have a clump of SRB that's basically between hunting and the highway. So, um, so as far as the policy behind it, I, I understood that was the case further down and I, and that makes a lot more logical sense to me. And I, and I personally would, uh, would not have brought something forward to the, for that piece because it does make more sense there. But in this area with these lots already being developed, 
and because of the way they're laid out and the, that they are substandard, uh, it makes a little more, it makes more sense here to maybe look at whether we can open up the zoning to make them conform. Thanks, George. Uh, Dan, do you have any uh, further questions? No, all set. Thank you, George. Any Thanks. further questions or comments? Matt? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a general comment and then a question. You know, we're looking to pare down this warrant with everything going on. Um, and we're making decisions on what's critical and what's not moving forward. So personally, I'd like to see, unless there's a true urgency, this be revisited at a different time. Um, because we as a board are trying to, like I said, get real business taken care of at the annual. Of course, it's uh, your right to do this, but just uh, as an aside, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Um, hearing the why of this, it sounds like a setback issue. So I'm almost with Dan that maybe an overlay or a different way to approach this would be better than a broad rezoning of that area. Um, but could you tell me, just say there was a teardown in the area now, Right, you would be able to be a non-conforming lot. You'd be able to construct it to the sidelines and the frontage of that SRA. Is that correct? That's right. And yeah. Therefore, you would have most likely a smaller house than would be allowed in an SRB? Yes. Okay. So I just think that that has to be taken into consideration. But if we're looking at some relief for additions or something of that nature, you know, there might be a different way to do it. But that's something we can discuss at a different time. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Any do you have any further questions or comments? Uh, George, do you want to say anything before we go to the next item on our agenda? No, I, I think we've covered it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, George. Uh, the next item on our agenda is another citizen's petition for a sewer line extension. And here to uh, tell us about that is Tal Achatu, who's present at the meeting. Mr. Achatu? Would you care to tell us what you're trying to do here? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and all members of the select board. Thanks for this opportunity to speak over Zoom. As uh, you may remember, I uh, am uh, stuck in Israel right now, um, unable to travel. Uh, we met about this uh, when we filed the petition um, in January and we met quickly thereafter um, together with Rick uh, Merson from DPW uh, who recommended that we file a sewer betterment petition, which is a slightly different process. Uh, and we immediately did that. All five of the uh, relevant abutters uh, voted in favor and that was submitted to DPW. I've met with them that same week uh, together with people from water and sewer and engineering. Um, and they were getting ready to, to start the work on evaluating the situation, uh, submitting um, whatever may be needed for the town meeting uh, at the time. It was not clear if they would be able to make it to the regular town meeting. Um, I imagine that as everybody's uh, life and work uh, is chaos at the moment, uh, the meeting got postponed, but also everybody's schedule is uh, very different. I don't know where it stands. Um, so essentially we have two uh, active routes to solve this uh, uh, problem of a sewer that touches everything from conservation to parks and rec and the DPW and engineering. One is, um, what Rick is working on, which I unfortunately don't have an update at the moment uh, on. And the other is this citizen's petition asking the town to budget um, for an extension. Now I would recommend, um, and I, I recognize from the previous discussion, you wanna pare everything down. Um, I think that there is uh, a, a matter of urgency here and also that the complexity is very, is very limited. It's, it ends up being a very simple question I'm hoping, and if you need a number on it, I think that all the departments involved um, have been do doing it for over two years now. They have at least rough numbers. I could suggest the number of 300,000 to be attached if needed. And if we can progress with it, put it in front of the town, anything that we can do to see this done in 2021, I think would be good for the town. Um, that, that would be my, my request. And I also wanna again, recognize everybody's effort at this and the meeting and even holding the meeting and everything is, is much appreciated. Thank you, Tal. Are there any questions or comments on this citizen's petition? Oh, I may. We need to note that Mr. Junta left the meeting or? Um, the, the minutes will note it, yeah. Okay. Kate, did you have something to say? I did. And to be fair, I moved Mr. Junta off the meeting, so <laughs> just. At the oh, okay. To be fair to him, he didn't. Um, I did want to just uh, let the board know that 
Um, the petitioners did file with the Department of Public Works in, in uh, early February after they had talked to you. Um, you know, it's still possible for us to be able to get this to the October town meeting for appropriation. The annual town meeting citizens petition is not an appropriation and it's, it's merely advisory. So I think, um, the, I think the sentiment of the board when um, we met on this uh, earlier this year, seems like a long, long time ago, um, that you know, it was something that was important to move forward and that we all agree that it should move forward and we can try to get it to October. Now the pandemic has really changed just about everything. So, um, but that's still a, a, still a possibility from where we are um, that it could get there. The, the article that's in the annual um, is not an appropriation and doesn't move it any faster than um, an article that the, uh, for appropriation that would go in the earliest in October. Now, Mr. Mr. Archibald, do you understand the, the import of what the town manager is saying? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it, essentially it has to do with uh, the, the way the bureaucracy would process things for budgeting. I assume, right? If I'm getting the gist of it. And I think if, if I'm misinterpreting incorrectly, Kate, please correct me. Um, that means that the speed at which this could happen is probably not materially affected by it ha appearing in October as opposed to June. Is that correct? Um, yes. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm here to follow your recommendations. You're the, you're the experts at this. Um, I'm, the sentiment that I want to convey is that basically all five of the abutters um, have been dealing with this in one way or another for three to 10 years, depending on how you look at it. There is a sense of urgency in a number of directions, both in terms of, um, of environmental impact and uh, a lot of other departments in the town want to see it done. Whatever you got, you know, I, I, I want to support you in, in progressing this in whatever would be the right way. Thank you. Does any other member have a question or a comment? Yes, I do. Mr. Matthews? Dan? Um, is, is, is Walker Lane uh, a private way? Half of it is correct. Okay. Part of, and, and you have, I assume that there's not actually a design, but there's a rough uh, plan for how this um, sewer line would be constructed is, 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 and I'm just, that's a question. I'm just, where does it, we, do we stand in terms of planning out exactly what uh, the, the going to be involved? So the, 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 the line between what a design and a plan is, has been uh, um, kind of fuzzy uh, over this process. Uh, back in January, there was a, a design that the town engineer was willing to sign on. To me, that sounds like a plan. Um, uh, and uh, the, the process of filing the betterment petition basically kicks off the DPW's process of planning proper to, to all town categories of planning. I understand that a, a civil plan may be different from what a town plan would be in a variety of ways, involvement of police detail or other requirements or whatever it may be. Okay. But um, I, I think, so. I think, I, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I think that I, that gives me enough. The, I think that as far as I'm concerned, I think everyone that's involved with, and my one other question, all of the residential abutters that would be responsible for paying for this, the cost of this installation are in favor of doing the work, yes? Correct, they all voted yes. Okay, so this is not my area of, of expertise, but I do understand that building a new sewer line is a matter that involves a, a, a kind of a process. You've used the term bureaucracy, but it's just a process, a set of rules and, and ways of doing business that we try to um, follow uh, in order to be fair and comply with the law and to get a good get a good product. What I think that we need, and my this question may be coming back to the town manager, is to say we need, I think everyone involved would like to have a sewer line installed to connect walk, the Walker Lane properties to the town sewer system. So exactly what the rules and the process and design for that may involve some complexities that no one that's participating in this conversation is fully aware of. But we'd, I think I'm, my understanding is that everyone would like to have that done and to be done in move along in, in good order. So I'm kind of 
coming back to the town manager to ask the question, what is the right path to get from sitting here discussing the desirability of, of building the sewer line and the fact that the neighbors wouldn't like it uh, and actually having that built and having it paid for, which is going to be primarily involved being paid for over time by the, by the abutters to um, get this done the way everyone is asking for uh, and meet all of the needs that we've, we've discussed. Well, it's my understanding, Mr. Chair, that um, there were two paths and the neighborhood um, had explored contracting with a private contractor to install the sewer themselves, which then the town would oversee and, and accept. Um, and then the other way is to petition the town to install it and then the cost would be allocated. Um, when they came to us to ask for that, I believe it was either late late January, I believe. Um, is that right? I'll thank you. Um, they did then file the petition and then the process will move forward where the town will um, either look at a plan that was uh, a concept or a design that was put in place by the developer and uh, complete its own plan. Uh, we do have to do survey work and then we would have to seek appropriation. Um, the all town departments are on um, reduced schedules and um, field work isn't being done. I mean, so the timing is just um, terrible for, uh, you know, where, where we are in January and where we are today. We haven't really survey crews to work. So, um, but I can certainly talk to the director of public works and town engineer and get the board a report of sort of the best case and um, uh, medium case of well, what the next steps of this would be and when they might be able to occur. And, and I can get you that by your next meeting. Okay, and can I follow up a little more, Mr. Chairman? Please. I just, um, so there's, as, and I'm playing this back, but I wanna be clear in my own mind. There really w were at one point two routes that the neighbors could, could subject to town approval, have it done privately, or the, the neighbors could ask the town by petition to take charge of the process and um, have the town ha do or have the work done and then charge betterment to the to the neighbors right now is it is it is the town gonna are we on that are yes. we're on the town route now yeah that's my understanding yes okay because i just the one thing that i get most worried about when we have citizens approaching or there's many things to worry about, I guess, but one of the things I worry about is when we are talking about something with, with people that have a problem in a neighborhood and there are two plans in play simultaneously. At this point, the private, the private option is off the table. We're gonna follow the, the town uh, directed uh, process, town process and that process has been initiated by the neighbors filing a petition in good order to initiate that. Is that where we stand? That's certainly my understanding. Is that yours, Mr. Secretary? Yes. I mean, we, for, for two years, we were trying to get things done and some complexities involving how deep the, the, it would have to be and the water table depth and would it or wouldn't it reach the other, the end of the road. And a bunch of complexities made it very difficult to do, um, reducing the number of contractors that can do it. Um, and our, that path has been cut off because the, uh, just the cost of surveying would be um, the cost of putting in septic systems instead. And so as a neighborhood, what we've decided to do is to explore the opportunity of doing it through the sewer betterment program that has existed within the town for many years. Um, and that many departments seem to agree is a suitable situation here. This is a terminal line. It, it's a very easy decision in, in, in terms of um, understanding what the impact would be. Um, we just basically finished that line. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then, then we, can, we can sleep better at night putting septic system in, knowing that we've tried every possible other way to put a sewer in. Okay, now I'd like to follow up a little more if I may. Okay, Dan. Um, just because, you know, we've, you, this is your second time in front of the board, Mr. Adjutov, and I can tell that it's been a difficult thing for you, and this is not necessarily your line of work either. Um, the, I can assure you there will be more difficulties before this thing gets done. Um, we, we know that and I, and, and, and I can appreciate some of the frustrations and the side roads that you've ended up going down on your way to get here. It's just clear, what I'm saying is we need a clear path to follow um, 
and it's been described to me that we now are on that path, which is to follow the town sewer betterment program option. If for some reason that doesn't work out, well, then we all have to have another meeting and figure out what's going to happen next. But that's the path. So I think what the town manager is saying to you is that this is on the this is on the work list. It's a work list that's made on our side much more difficult by the fact that the the physical facility where the people had to get together and plan this thing out is closed now, but it's on the list and in with all deliberate speed, the town will move this forward and try to keep you informed. Is that a fair statement, Madam Town Manager? Yes, uh, we'll work to get a, um, a, a work a draft work plan with um, contingencies. Okay, and it's just, and then I'll be done. It is, there will be more problems They've been added to by the recent events that none of us asked for. Um, but I think we're on a path and it's gonna take longer than we think, but we're on a path to getting it done. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Matthews. Thank you, uh, Tom. Uh, are there Thank any you. other questions or comments before we move to the next agenda item? Mr. Chair, just a, a clarification. If we sure. move this to the fall or beyond, I'm assuming we're gonna draft that article because Citizens' petitions, you know, articles are very nuanced. And if it's coming from us and with our legal team to get this over the goal line, I'm assuming it would come to town meeting that way? Yeah. Uh, okay, right. Uh, so I would, I would strongly suggest that it come that route um, and we either try, we all want this done. So either the fall or as soon as we can do it uh, with the information we have. So thank you. Thank you, Tal. Appreciate it very much and speedy return, John. Do we need to ask uh, Mr. Achitov to withdraw this or to postpone it till the fall? Um, is there anything that we need to do from a ministerial act here? That's a good question. Kate? It's certainly up to Mr. Achitov if he wants to withdraw it. It is advisory. Um, it doesn't provide any uh, anything better than your assurance that you're going to do your best to get it on. So. It just, you know, he can let us know if he wants to keep it on um, or not. It does no harm to keep it on is what I'm hearing, right? Yeah, can I make a suggestion, Mr. Chairman? Sure. I think maybe Mr. Achitov could talk to the town manager offline and think about this and talk with his neighbors. A withdrawal is a binding legal decision. And although I think that seems to make a lot of sense to me under the circumstances, the withdrawal of this citizen, of this Warren article. That's not something I would ask Mr. Achitov to make by himself on TV from another part of the world. So I'd rather not have action on it tonight, but maybe he can talk to his, his neighbors, um, the other folks that he's working with, and talk to the town manager. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mary Ann, did you have something? Well, and I was just going to say is it certainly seems reasonable to me that he should have an opportunity to speak to um, Mr. Merson to understand what the current status is with the town path. And that seemed like information that he didn't have at hand before tonight's hearing, so. So this is on a track to be followed up. Um, Mr. Achitov will talk to Kate and Mr. Merchant, Merson, and we'll make a decision on our side of this, but the consensus here is to move this forward in a meaningful way, possibly in October. Is there anything else to be said on this? If not, thank you very much, Tal. Uh, I hope you get back soon uh, and have a safe situation there. Uh, this yeah. brings us to the town manager's report and her part of the agenda. So I'm going to yield to you, Kate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first item on my agenda is a couple of items associated with the annual town meeting. Um, and before I start, I did want to um, uh, let the board know that Representative Denise Garlic is on the call and uh, on the job. Welcome, Denise. Glad you could join us. Um, so the first item, Mr. Chair, is that the board had taken a vote at a previous meeting to recommend a date for the um, annual town meeting to be June 8th. We were still working out with council um, the appropriate mechanism by which that um, official uh, moving of the town meeting needed to happen. Uh, we did uh, have council, Chris Heap, 
who in consultation with the moderator, Michael Fee, who I believe is also um, on the attendee list. Um, and they agreed that under the provisions of um, chapter 39, section nine, um, which allows the board uh, to move the town meeting um, in, even if it's mentioned in a bylaw, what the date of the town meeting is. So uh, that having been said, uh, we would ask the board to vote to change the date for the 2020 annual town meeting to June 8, 2020, in accordance with um, Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 9. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Matt. I don't know if this is appropriate currently, but uh, we spoke under Article 7, which is the property relief uh, fund to increase that amount. I see it currently in the warrant at 25,000. Um, if it would be appropriate, I would move to make that, change that sum to 50,000. Uh, after we're done with this. After we're done with but this. I just wanted to let you know that that would be my upcoming motion if appropriate. Okay, you'll be recognized to make that motion. Thank you. Uh, on this motion, uh, Marianne. I noticed that Sandy Sincata has her hand up and I don't know if she has something that's material to this or something that was material to the prior discussion. So I just want to flag that. I'm fine with this proposal. I've contacted her offline. I'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you. How did you see that, Marianne? If you open the participant list. Oh, okay. You can see who raises their hand there. Ah, very interesting. We're all learning here. Um, uh, proceed, Kate. Oh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we come to the vote. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Mr. Borelli? Yes. Ms. Cooley? Yes. And Mr. Bullion? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the chair votes yes. That makes it unanimous. Mr. Chair, before you move to changes in the warrant, um, I just did want to mention uh, again and to thank uh, Michael Fee, the moderator, who's been very helpful in um, helping us navigate uh, these changes and what could very well change again. Um, so, that, and that will be true under the special as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any changes to the warrant that uh, any board member would care to offer? Mr. Chair. recognizes Mr. Brill. <laughs> thank you. Under Article 7, appropriate for Needham Property Tax Assistance Program, I move that we change the sum from $25,000 to $50,000. Is there a second on Mr. Borelli's motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? If, if I could. No. Marianne? Um, so I do think that this is something that we've talked about and that we agreed to do, but I do appreciate the work that Mr. Matthews has done with trying to gain additional donations for this. And I was actually glad to hear um, that despite all the challenges that the town is seeing right now, that there are in fact increased donations that have happened. So I hope if anybody still has their tax property tax envelope sitting there with their extra envelope, that they will make a donation to the fund because I think that that is the preferred, you know, our, our original intention with how this would be well funded by the citizens to support uh, senior citizens in town who are unable to pay their property taxes. Thank you for uh, reminding us of that. That's good to know. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, just as backup information for those who are watching, we had a presentation as we know um, from the committee with the recommendation of 50,000 in looking at the amount of applicants and the rewards or awards going down over time. It just seems appropriate to have this amount. And I know that we're going to review how we're going to uh, try to increase private fundraising dollars. As Ms. Cooley said, that has, we have seen uh, a little bit of a surge from that, but I know Mr. Matthews maybe can speak a little more to it, but um, we're trying to get that, that amount up the best we can, but um, in the meantime, I think it's appropriate to have a dollar amount that's, uh, you know, more relevant to what the need is. Yeah, and I think there's greater need now than ever before. Uh, Dan? Yeah, I, I agree, yeah. and, and Marianne. Uh, the, we had a very good presentation from the committee in, in their request to go up to the 50000 for this year. Um, 
we are interested in and have been working, and I think we're on a path to get a significant increase over time in the private contributions, but that path involves particularly a strategy of having uh, members of our advocacy group attending small community, community group meetings, clubs, associations, uh, faith groups, civic activities to try to, all of that has been uh, put on largely on hold um, for, for some time in the future. So we're, we're, it's gonna take a little bit of, we're on a good path, but it's gonna be a longer and slower one at least in the near future than we thought. So at this point, having the extra 50,000, having the $50,000 in the fund from the tax levy would be a good thing. Thank you. Thanks. John, do you have anything to add? I agree. Okay. Uh, then that brings us to the vote on Mr. Uh, Borelli's motion. Uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, you're on mute, Dan. And I suppose I should unmute if I want to yes, vote. Before, if you want to vote, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so are you voting yes yes okay mr burrell yes ms cooley yes mr bullion yes the chair votes yes that's unanimous thank you thank you for your motion Matt. um Sir, i did have one other item on the annual Tommy of course. um there is legislation pending in the house that would allow a community uh, by its choice to have a remote uh, town meeting if uh, in a representative town meeting form of government. Um, it's something would would take quite a lot of thought about whether this is something we would want to use. Um, but in an absolute worst case scenario, it is something that it might be very helpful to have as an option. Um, so I did speak to uh, Representative Garlic, who is very supportive of the uh, legislation and is waiting for final language. It may be that the board wants to um, weigh in its support as, um, as other communities have done, just to outline maybe for um, the legislative members what the, what, the, what the worst case things that could happen if we can't hold our town meeting and how difficult that might be for us. Well, I think that as a board, it makes sense for us to have as many options as we possibly can in a circumstance like this. And my understanding is that this is not obligatory if the legislation passes. So it just gives us an option. Okay. So the chair would solicit a motion. A moved. Is there a second? Second. second? second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, just briefly, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, it's a, we should have this as available as a recourse if it comes to that. Although I know that we're looking at every, a great many alternatives short of of going to remote to an entirely remote meeting because as we know from participating it, this is a format that has a lot of advantages, but also quite a few disadvantages. And it would be better in the, the purpose of town meeting is to meet in purpose in person when we can. And I'd like to do that to the extent that we can, but this is the right uh, step to take at this time. Thank you, Dan. Is there any other comment or question? I would just say, I would just say, Mr. Chair, that um, I wholeheartedly agree, and there are there are a handful of things that um, if they don't get done this fiscal year, and we can outline them for you, would be very difficult for the community. And so, if we were prohibited from having our members come together in person, um, this, we just think it would be helpful to have this like um, could what could be a very pared down. Um, and then the, October isn't as far away anymore as we think. Right, although sometimes right. it seems like forever. <laughs> um, and we come to the vote, um, Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Borelli. Yes. Ms. Cooley. Yes. Mr. Bullion. Yes. And the chair votes yes, that's unanimous, Kate. So you can convey that to our representative who's on the Thank you. online here. Thank you. The next item, Mr. Chair, is the, um, the revolving special town meeting, uh, which was originally noticed, which was originally discussed for the third night of town meeting on May 13th. Uh, we then moved it to June 15th in order to make, to keep um, the practice of having it be on what felt like would be our regular town meeting. Um, again, in consultation with the moderator, in the event that 
um, our town meeting becomes a very shortened town meeting, it seemed prudent to move the special town meeting to uh, June 8th. That way you could have both uh, town meetings on the same night um, and not perhaps have a town meeting and then have to have another town meeting um, to you know, a week later. So um, I, I would ask the board to move the, um, to call for the, to change the date for the notice special town meeting to eight o'clock on June 8th. And also um, be mindful that uh, in another two weeks, we could be talking again about um, what needs to happen, but we will be preparing these warrants for distribution um, uh, right around the time uh, of your, your next meeting. So uh, this is what we expect them to say. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move that the special be set for Monday, June 8th at 8 p.m. Okay. Thank second. you. Is there a second? Mary Ann second. seconds. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we come to the vote. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Borelli. Yes. Ms. Cooley. Yes. Mr. Bullion. Yes. The chair votes yes, so that's unanimous. That brings us to the election warrant. So typically, Mr. Chair, the warrant for the annual town election is a consent item, but um, I wanted to make sure the board um, would discuss the uh, final recommendation of the town clerk, uh, considering all the feedback that she's received to, um, we had already moved the date of the election to May 26th, and the town clerk has proposed to run the election from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and um, if she's working out uh, very thoughtful plans to keep our uh, election workers, staff, and voters um, safe and socially distant. And um, they're busy at work processing applications for ballots by mail. So um, we expect quite a, quite a few uh, people to vote in that way. Thank you. Uh are there any questions uh, with respect to this item? Any comment? Thank you, Kate. Uh, the COVID-19 update. And before you begin, I, I think I speak for all of us when I say that our first responders are working extra hard on this, as is our health department, town employees, the DPW is still out in force. So I think the town's response, at least from our standpoint, has been very, very effective and deserves our sincere thanks. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Borelli. Before we move on to that, I know that I see there's a motion on the election warrant. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I just moved that the select board vote to approve and sign the May 26, 2020 election warrant. Thank second. you, Mr. Borelli. Is there a second? Second. Uh, we, any discussion on that? We'll come to the uh, vote, Mr. Matthews? Yes. Matt? Yes. Marianne? Yes. And John? Yes. And the chair votes yes, however belatedly. Thank you. Um, please proceed. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have a number of items for you tonight. Uh, the first is that, uh, as we all know, uh, Governor Baker continued the stay-at-home order um, until May 18th, he's put together a committee of 17 um, people to work on a reentry plan. I note that the plan is due on the 18th, so I, I want to, um, to let you know that we are not expecting to be ramping up service, services on the 18th because um, we know that it's going to take a lot of work on a part of a lot of people to, um, to open up services and our staff will be helping open up our own services, but also the services of, of uh, particularly restaurants. So if, if re when, when and if restaurants, when restaurants um, are opening, you know, that's an, quite, a, quite a lot of work that we have to make sure that, um, that there are inspections and things like that. So we, um, I'm actually also on an advisory committee with the MMA to advise the governor and the lieutenant governor on municipal issues. And we've been talking about um, the kinds of things that uh, can result in great differences between communities when you might have, for instance, a parade in one community, no parade in another community, uh, fields open, fields not open, um, celebrations, no celebrations, concerts, no concerts. And so 
um, it, we think it just would be really helpful, maybe even regionally, to have some consistency among the kinds of things that um, the public health officials recommend so that we, we're, not, um, we're not having all of the people come to our concert because there's no other concerts or vice versa. So that would be, um, that work is ongoing. We fully expect that uh, town services will ramp up slowly and uh, we, we will at your May 12th meeting have um, more information on what we're planning, but we are expecting to open um, some buildings and some services before others and to um, talk uh, about how much they would be open uh, to the public, uh, at least at the beginning. So once we have the guidance from uh, the Commonwealth that we need to make sure we follow, we'll be presenting you with um, a plan for, for uh, re-entry. One of the things that we have done is create a document which we will be sending uh, to the board for you to consider, but also um, it is a compilation of the services that we're currently providing in the departments that people are not able to visit. And um, all of our uh, pages of those departments on the website um, have updated what services are being offered. So if you're wondering what's currently being offered and, and how you can get some things done, um, the website has been, the staff and the team have been really working hard to make sure that that's clear. And we're having, we're also compiling a document that if you wanted to look at everything at once, you'd be able to find it. So that's really great. Uh, earlier today, the Board of Health uh, issued a regulation mandating face coverings in certain um, circumstances, not walking down the street, but in a lot of um, inside areas, workspaces, work sites, and that's available um, on the town's website under um, the, the health department and it, it will be it it should be um, on the front page as well and in fact um, the town issued an alert needham through um, cell phone text and email today so um, most people have seen it and ha would have received the link um, I did want to mention mr. chair there has been um, some uh, ongoing and interesting conversation about um, EMS response protocols and how we have been adapting um, during the evolution of this virus. And um, when it first started, we, um, we established a protocol where the fewest number of emergency responders would access um, homes and private facilities. In fact, um, you know, it, it, it might have been in the past, you might have six or seven people entering the home and maybe uh, with fire, paramedics, and police. And so um, under the guidance from the CDC and the state, we've been limiting the number to the absolute essential personnel in order to um, keep our personnel safe, but also to keep the public safe. During the, the course, I mean, that the, uh, initially, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, um, this was a protocol that was uh, put in place for high risk, um, people of high risk for COVID-19. And as this has evolved, uh, and if, as we've seen from testing, we are now treating virtually everybody in Needham as somebody who, who could um, have the virus. And so we put that protocol into place for everybody. What we, the, the one thing that is uh, maybe a little bit different is um, we are asking if it's possible for uh, the patient to come to the door so that our staff don't have to enter a facility and which requires a lot of cleaning on the part of um, everybody on both sides. Um, but I just wanted to assure the board that when, um, if a patient can't be brought down, for instance, from an upstairs room or is not ambulatory or is uh, very sick, the paramedics will um, never hesitate to enter a facility. So um, we had some questions about that. So I thought it would be um, helpful for you to understand that. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have on that. Um, just a few, few other items. Um, the, uh, we continue to receive donations. We actually have. Uh, we received um, this week 400 KN95 KN masks. We've had a lot of people making homemade um, cloth masks for us. And uh, anybody listening who's making homemade cloth masks, we could use um, as many as you want to provide because um, it's great to have them as available for the public and for um, staff if um, there are no other options. We also, uh, if anybody has donated, they know that we were repurposing an old um, sort of trash bucket looking device at uh, the Rosemary complex. And now we have a kiosk that's um, a lot easier to use. So that's, um, that's a uh, great change for us. Also, um, as of now, residents who want to support um, their neighbors can give in the 
uh, for the COVID-19 fund can donate through the gift of warmth online. So um, they need just go to needhammagovernor slash gift of warmth and they can make an online donation. So we're trying to make it easier for folks who would like to do that. Um, finally, uh, given the uncertainty around um, when uh, facilities will be able to reopen, public health is postponing summer camps that were scheduled to open in Needham um, through June 30th, 2020. And this is consistent with um, what, what we're gonna see across the Commonwealth. So they're gonna be looking at re-entry of camps on a month by month basis. So um, June 1, we'll be looking at whether camps can reopen in, uh, in July. And so hopefully uh, we'll have a lot more information at that point. And uh, not really a COVID update, but uh, because of COVID-19 and the cancellation of schools, we weren't, our parks and forestry folks weren't able to have their regular Arbor Day uh, at the elementary schools. And so uh, last Thursday and today, the, the um, Park and Rec and Parks and Forestry socially, remotely, distantly uh, distributed hundreds of trees um, to residents who drove up and picked them up and, and drove off. And um, uh, Parks and Forestry Superintendent has created some videos that our PIO has shared with the community on, on social media. So um, I witnessed myself, several people queued up to pick up trees today. So um, that's a nice thing. And finally, uh, at your meeting on May 12th, um, Dave Davison will provide the board with a, a financial update and the planning that we're thinking about with respect to the FY21 budget and, um, and our proposals for that. So we hope to have um, more information for you and we'll be making a presentation on that day. That's all I have. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on the town manager's uh, report? Um, Ms. Cooley. I would just note, um, as Kate did say, that we sent an alert out through the Needham Alert System, but I know that we continue to have fewer people on that alert than all the citizens in town, and um, there there is good reason to join it. So if people are interested, that the sign up for that alert is on the homepage for the town, so NeedhamMA.gov, and I encourage people to be a part of that. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Cooley. I will I will be in trouble for not having thought to say that myself. Thank you. Uh, it got said, Kate. Um, are there any committee reports? Hearing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is second. there a second? Marianne seconds. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Yes. Uh, 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 Mr. Bullion has his hand up before we go to the vote. Please. Before we go to the vote, I, 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 I just didn't want the meeting to close without, and, and you know, with all due respect to all of us who 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 know Greg Shesko, and I just want to get back. And I I didn't recall he was a he I think he is a 25 year town meeting member, and I didn't I I did not hear that 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 was mentioned. And I wanted I didn't want this meeting to close without that being acknowledged, um, because all of us you know are are very fond of Greg, and we have all of us have many years history with Greg as as a longtime friend of all of us. So. I'm sorry to have interjected that at this time and not at the beginning of the meeting. Thank well, you. You can interject something like that at any time, John. That's very okay. important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we come to the vote. Uh, Dan? Yes. Matt? Yes. Marianne? Yes. John? Yes. Chair votes yes. The meeting of April 28th, 2020 is now adjourned on zoom.us. Thank you. Thank you.